Hey, welcome back. My name's Al. And if you have ever asked yourself, when is the right time to remesh in Blender or Dynamesh and ZBrush, I got you covered. This video is for you. So the short answer to this is you can use remesh whenever the heck you want. You're the creator, you're the artist. If you use it and it gets you to where you're trying to go, use it. That's awesome. Typically, when people use remesh or Dynamesh, what they're gonna do is use it at the beginning of their sculpt. So whether you're concepting some sort of idea or you're blocking out and you're trying to fuse things together, that's typically when you'll use it. So I'm gonna show you both of those, the concept stage and then blocking out of how you'll use it in Blender, and then we'll get over to ZBrush and do something similar. Okay, so I'm in Blender, and let's say I just want to play with some ideas. Just going to kind of get some ideas for this monster that my hero is going to be facing. And with Snake Hook, I can pull and pull, and then eventually it's going to stretch. You can see the polygon starting to form here. If I were to keep going, let's just do this for this example. Things are getting real stretched back there. And if I were to come out this way, whoop, that's real bad, right? So what I'm gonna do is at this point, I'm gonna press Shift R and this gives me this little grid. And this is how large roughly each polygon is going to be whenever I do that remesh command. So since this is just blocking things out, I don't want it to be super dense. I'm going to do something like that. Press Command R or Control R and it has taken that uh, voxel size and scattered it across my geometry. I said across. I can't believe I said across. I tell my wife that I never say across. Across. All right. So let's keep rocking with this character. Apparently it's going to turn into some sort of alien thing. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's say it's got these spikes coming off its back that we can really show the Dynamesh. So it's like, oh my gosh, it's super, super polygonal, super low poly. So I'm going to press Shift R and I gave myself more resolution. And that's going to let me just keep on going. Shift R. Yeah, let's keep going. Shift R. There we go. So you can see that I do not care at all about my geometry. It doesn't matter right now. This is just a concept creature that I'm going for, right? This really is just a giant mess of nothing. I haven't really <laughs> thought too hard about on this, but you can see how powerful this would be. If I just come in here um, and it doesn't just have to be snake hook. Snake hook is probably the most fun example to show because you can do things like that and shift R. Let's dive in a little bit with clay strips and just take a look. So I'm going to press command R, actually shift R first, lower that resolution. Now it's a little bit more dense. So I can come in here and then just start playing with some ideas. He's an angry elf, whatever this character wants to be. Yay, there's the bad guy. Um, you could literally do this for your whole character head all the way down to toes if you wanted. Uh, just playing with ideas. It doesn't have to be characters. This could be vehicles. This could be anything that you want. Environments. It's really great for concepting. That's the first one. But I'm going to show you the similar thing in ZBrush just so we're on the same page. So in ZBrush, it's definitely different. But I'm going to use Snake Hook to pull, pull, pull. See how it gets all janky, just like in Blender. I'm going to go to Geometry, down to Dynamesh. And typically, by default, this is off. I'm going to click Dynamesh. It did that Dynamesh function. That is based on this resolution slider. So not nearly as great as Blender, because in Blender, I could do the Shift R. I can see how large those polygons are. Literally, I am guessing here. If I turn this super low, I don't have to press that again. Once it's on, kind of like I'm masking, I'm going to hold uh, Control outside of my mesh, left click, and drag. It's going to do that Dynamesh. So let's make a change. Left click and drag. It's a lower resolution. So it's it's literally just guessing. Never crank this all the way unless you know that's what you need. But I can just pull, 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 Dynamesh, Dynamesh, do whatever I want, Dynamesh. Smooth, change the resolution uh, if I need to. So that's the concept phase. That is one time that would be awesome to use Remesh or Dynamesh. Go back into Blender. Okay, so we got this little crocodile guy, this totodile, and it's composed of several parts. So I've got the main body, I've got this arm, and this leg, eye, and then these spines on the back. So let's say I'm done blocking out this character, and I actually want to work on this transition maybe between the arm and the body. So if I like sculpt on this, I can like sculpt where there's some stuff, but it's not connected. You'll see I just keep going, 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 going. It's not affecting the arm at all. So maybe what I want is for these to be fused together. Now that I blocked it out, nailed down proportions, things are good. I'm gonna do go back into that object mode, hold shift, grab my uh, my arm. Now I'm using industry standard, so if it's not shift and blender, I don't know what to tell you. But once I grab those, I will go to object, down to join. I'm sure there's a hot key for that that you blender heads know. I don't. I'm gonna press join. So now this is one object. And what I'm going to do is head back over to sculpting and take a look. Okay, what's going on, right? It's not 
fuse together. That's one of the cool things about Remesh and Dynamesh is this. I'm gonna press Shift R, get the resolution that I want, and then Command R or Control R. This is actually fuse these two pieces together. Let me do a little bit more resolution. There we go. So you can see if I smooth this out, this is all one piece. I can come in here and sculpt this to my liking. Super, super awesome to do that. Once I were to fuse these together, then I could do a couple things. I could retopologize, things like that. Let's do the same thing over in ZBrush. This is a more finished version, but similar thing. You can see here that I have the body. I've got all these sub tools. So I got the body, got the arm. Like what we're going to do is merge the body with the arms. I'm going to go down to merge, merge down. Got it. Now these are one, but just like in Blender, they're not fused together. So if I were to come in here and use move topological, right, it's just moving that shoulder or it's just moving the body. It's not actually grabbing both. That's where Dynamesh comes in. Let's go ahead and make sure it's turned on. Under Geometry, Dynamesh is on. Let me lower this. There we go. So now these are fused together, and I can take all those pieces, fuse them together, and then actually start my sculpting process. Clarify. Remesh and Dynamesh are essentially the same thing. One's in Blender, one's in ZBrush. The two times that I think most people will use these two when you're concepting out an idea, and you're just want to pull and not worry about all the crazy stuff, not worry about topology, anything like that. The other is, of course, what we just did, which was blocking out your character, fusing things together. But remember, you use it whenever the heck you want to. 